and KSP Review. You can use these problems to help you review and practice so that you can understand the kinds of questions you might see on an assessment of KEQ and KSP. Question number one. A mixture of H2 and I2 is allowed to react at 448 degrees Celsius. When the temperature is established, concentrations are found to be as listed. Calculate the value of KEQ at 448 in these data, and they give you an equation. So it might be helpful as you go through this PowerPoint to print out a copy of the PowerPoint that I will post so that you can follow along and not have to write all of this down. You'll also notice what I plan to do is to just set the problem up, discuss it. You should stop and try it yourself, and then I'll show you what the final answer is. In this question, you should always write an equilibrium expression. So let me get my pen. And KEQ, of course, is products over reactant. Luckily for us, they provided the equation. And also, you'll notice that every substance in the equation is one that is included in the equilibrium expression because these are all gases. So the, there's the equilibrium expression. We would plug in the appropriate ones. We would solve, and then we'd have the KEQ. The answer, 50.167. Question number two. The KEQ at a certain temperature is 12.55. The concentrations are found to be, as listed, is the reaction equilibrium? If not, which way will the reaction shift to reach equilibrium? You notice this is the same exact um, equation we had before. So KEQ is HI squared over H2 times I2. This time they tell you the KEQ is 12.55. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to put our information into the question and see if we get 12.55. So we put H2 in, 0.92, I2, 0.56, and HI, 2.2, making sure, of course, to square the numerator. When we do, we get the number 9.39. So Q is 9.39. But you'll notice that that number, Q, is less than the KEQ. In other words, the reaction has not reached equilibrium yet. We would like the number to get bigger. Therefore, we have to produce more products to do that. And that's why the reaction shifts to the right to achieve equilibrium. Question number three. Will a precipitate of silver chromate form if 120 milliliters of 0.014 molar silver nitrate is mixed with 80 milliliters of 0.0023 molar sodium chromate? The KSP of silver chromate is this number. So this is one of the complex questions. Will a precipitate form? But it should be pretty easy because if you follow the process, it's easy to, to um, achieve the correct answer. So we're going to write a KSP. Notice this is KSP. KSP and KEQ aren't the same. And of course, on a test that might include both concepts, you have to make sure that you read very carefully. Are we talking about solubility product, like in this one, or are we doing equilibrium, like the previous two? So in this case, we have silver chromate, which might be produced. And here is the equation for it. Notice its balanced equation involves a coefficient. That makes it a little mo bit more exciting. So the KSP for this is silver squared and chromate ion over nothing. Because remember, silver chromate has the potential of being a solid. So we want to find out, is it a solid in this case? So we know the KSP is 8.5 times 10 to the negative 12. That's what that number is. So our job is to fill in concentrations of silver and square that, and concentrations of chromate, multiply it all out, and see, does it equal that? Is it greater than? Is it less than? What is that number? What is that Q value? So the 
first thing we need to do is we need to figure out where does the silver ion come from. And if we notice here, um, silver nitrate has all the silver ions that this equation is going to have when it does the double replacement. So we're going to use MV equals MV for each of these, meaning silver nitrate, that will give us the silver ion concentration, and for sodium chromate, that's going to give us the chromate ion concentration. So the molarity is 0 0.014 for silver nitrate and 120 mils. Now, of course, we don't know what the molarity is, but when the volume is, is added, we get 200 milliliters. Solving that, we get 0 0.0084. I do the same exact thing, MV equals MV, for sodium chromate, using 80 milliliters times 0 0.0023 equals M times 200. When I do that, I get 0 0.00092. Well, here's the answer. QSP, or the value of Q that I get from, from plugging information into KSP formula, is 6.49 times 10 to the negative 8. I actually have to compare that number to the known KSP value. Remember that KSP is the maximum concentration to be soluble. Well, if 8.5 times 10 to the negative 12 is the maximum concentration, we've exceeded that. 6.49 times 10 to the negative 8 is actually larger than it. So that's why the answer is yes, a precipitate will form. Question number four. Calculate the molar solubility of calcium fluoride if the KSP of calcium fluoride is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11. So we know what the KSP is, but now we want to figure out the molar solubility of calcium fluoride. This is where we're going to use the values of x, but it's also important to make sure to write the balanced equation. So CaF2 will form calcium ions and two fluoride ions. So the KSP is calcium times fluorine squared. We know the number for KSP, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11, but we don't know these other numbers. But we can tell how they're related by the balanced equation. Calcium to fluorine ratio is 1 to 2 because of the coefficients. So if I call calcium x, then we have to call fluorine 2x. And again, even though you think uh, you've already squared the exponent um, in the KSP expression, you actually have to double the concentration of f as well. So when you continue to work it out, you're going to have 4x cubed equals 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11. And then, of course, solving for x, you get 0 0.000206. Number five, when 0.4 moles of PBCl5 is heated in a 10 liter container, an equilibrium is established in which 0.25 moles of Cl2 is present. There's the equation. What is the number of moles of PCl5 and PCl3 at equilibrium? So this is one of those ice equations because they're talking about information in the beginning, although it doesn't say in the beginning but it says an equilibrium is established in which 0.25 moles of Cl2 is present. So that means after some time has passed. So what we have to do, of course, we write our PCl3 Cl2 expression. That's our KEQ. Remember, this is KEQ now. And we're going to plug numbers into that in a bit, but what numbers do we plug in? of course, equilibrium numbers. So I'm going to just set up ice here, and I'm going to use this PCL5, PCL3, and CL2. I don't know my squiggly line there. So in the beginning, we have 0.4 moles and 10 liters. That gives me 0 0.04 molar. Remember, there's no products. Then I know that at equilibrium, I have 0.25 moles of Cl2, but in 10 liters, that's 0.025, and that's molarity. 
I'm not even going to answer part A yet because I want to get the whole chart done. This is, remember, addition and this is subtraction. So 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025. These are all in a one to one to one ratio as the balanced equation. So we have 0 0.025 and this number is 0 0.015. So we're ready to answer the question. What's the number of moles of PCL3 and PCL5 at equilibrium? Well, this is molarity. So actually, I, what I would have to do is I'd have to solve molarity, or I could have used moles. And when I do, I get 0 .0, 0 0.15 moles. And that's the number of PCL5. Now, PCL3, I can see I didn't tell you. That would be 0.25 moles. And again, I have to go from molarity. That's what these are back to moles by multiplying by 10. What are the equilibrium concentrations of all three components? Well, there they are, 0 0.025 each of the products and 0 0.015 of the uh, reactant. And then finally, calculating KEQ. There we're going to plug these numbers in to that, and when we do, we get 0 0.04167. That's the KEQ. Again, you see a decimal answer, and you know that the products are favored because mathematically the numer pardon me, <laughs> that means the products are not favored because mathematically uh, products over reactants, to give a decimal answer, the PCL5 would have to be favorable. So that's the idea with that one. All right, number six. The KEQ for the following reaction is this number at a certain temperature. If the NO concentration is that, and N2 and O2 are those, is the system at equilibrium? This is one like we had before. Plug information in, compare to the known KEQ, and you will find that it's not at equilibrium. In fact, the Q value that you get is about 2200, so the reaction has to shift to the right to, re to reach equilibrium. Now, these kinds of questions are more thoughtful questions, a little bit less mathematical. And some people need practice in this. So here's a qu an equation, and the delta H is 197 kilojoules. We know this is endothermic. In other words, the heat is over here. The 197 kilojoules would be a reactant. How would the equilibrium shift in each case? What if we add oxygen? So in other words, I add more of oxygen it should shift to the left. What if I increase the pressure? These are all gases. If we increase the pressure, the reaction will also shift to the left towards fewer numbers of moles of gas. If the temperature is decreased, that means it wants to get more heat, which means it would also shift to the left. And if we add a catalyst to the system, it doesn't shift the reaction at all because it favors the forward and the reverse the same. Here's another question. The KEQ for the following reaction is this number. Is there a greater concentration of NO gas or N2 and O2 gases at 25? So this is one of those thought questions. For this one, it's pretty easy. The KEQ is a very small number. So that means when we have products over reactants, to get a small number, the reactants must be larger. A small number over a big number equals a small number. And the reactants are the ones that are more concentrated. So there's a greater concentration of NO gas, as, as it says here in the answer. Which is more soluble, substance A with a KSP of 2.4 times 10 to the negative 7, or substance B, KSP is 5.5 times 10 to the negative 5? Well, the answer is substance B. Why is it? Because the greater the KSP, the more soluble the substance. Number three, in the following reaction given, if the reaction is endothermic, what will happen to the value of KEQ as the temperature is increased? Explain fully. All right, so endothermic means heat is a reactant again. So there's a certain value of KEQ, products over reactants, at room temperature, let's say. What about if the temperature is increased? 
So if we heat this up, the reaction is going to shift to the right because it wants to move away from where, where the word heat is. Therefore, what's going to happen to that equilibrium? Because equilibrium is really based on different temperatures. Different temperatures have different equilibriums. So if I heat it up and the reaction shifts to the right, then products over reactants is, of course, KEQ. What's going to happen to that number? Well, that number is going to increase as well. So therefore, as temperature increases for this reaction, the value of KEQ is also going to increase.